I mean, we've talked already a little bit about America. Damon Alburn said he wrote Park Life after being in America for a long period of time, and he was dissatisfied with the kind of shopping mall culture that he saw as creeping over here, so that's why he wrote Park Life. Really? Why didn't he get into politics then? He was dissatisfied with the shopping mall culture that was creeping in over here. Well, that just goes to show what a pompous arse he is. You know, if you've got the time to sit down and worry about American culture creeping into British society, then I would get a proper fucking job. You know, other people are too busy trying to make a living. He's such a condescending cock, isn't he? You know, oh fuck, I wrote this album so I could stop American culture coming to Britain. Fucking wanker. Did you like Part Life? Um, I liked. Was that the one Girls and Boys was on? I liked the video for Girls and Boys and Tracy Jacks. I think was a good tune. See, the thing about I don't the thing about Blur is that they I respect them totally as musicians. The guitarist Graham Coxon is by far and away probably one of the most talented guitarists of his generation, and Damon's written some good songs. You know, but. He'll always come out with a condescending comment like that, you know. Like, you know, what does he know about British culture? He knows nothing. He's from Colchester. He's a fucking student. He took A level music, you know. He knows nothing. Nothing. A kind of example of how big an impact you have as a band. It's the number of tribute Oasis bands that are on. Yeah. I went to see one of them one night. And we just got back off tour. No Oasis, the, Scot the Scottish ones. And so everyone was saying that they were really fucking good and that the two guys that done me and Liam looked, looked like us. So we went down, a few of us, unannounced, just sort of turned up at, um, at the forum. And it was sold out. It was fucking sold out. I, unbelievable. You know, and on they came. And uh, uh, they were fucking awful, but, you know, it, it was just the fact that there was... There's a sellout gig there by some band playing other people's music. So we went to see them afterwards and gave one of them a guitar and all that stuff, you know. And they were quite, they were quite shocked. They thought they'd be really pissed off. It's like, well, you know, at least you're making a living doing something, you know. At least you're not on the dole. What? Bizarre. Did you hear how that band split up? No. <laughs> the Liam and Noel in that band fell out with each other. I heard, and this is, I bumped into one of them in a shop in Glasgow. And I said, uh, and it was round about the time of Be Here Now. And I bumped into the guy that done, or that was doing me. And I said, uh, I haven't heard that. You're not afraid. Just what you're doing, he said. Oh, no, nah, mate. He said, the urban verve, they're fucking cleaning up. <laughs> I had a girl come up to me once, um, <laughs> 1994, just after Supersonic came out. She claimed that she knew what it was about. And normally at this point, I would just, you know, well, fucking whatever. But I decided to, what do you think it's about then? He said it's about prostitution, which I just found fucking side-splittingly hilarious. And um, I was like, right, well, chop us out one or whatever you're on, love. But um, I like I like when people try and work out the meanings of my songs, especially the early ones, because they were just written in, I was pissed just writing, you know. And it's so uninhibited, just writing stuff like some might say, you know, sinks full of fishes and she's got, I mean, I would never write that now, you know, I'm too old for that now. <laughs> I wasn't, we, no, we didn't have a go at him because, you see, the thing about Damon Alburn is, is he's so defensive and no matter what, no matter what accusation you level at him, you know, He'll have to defend himself. He'd be sat there watching this now going, I'm not like that, I'm not like that, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I fucking swear I'm not. You know, and it's like, you fucking started it, mate, you know what I mean? And we had no problem with them right up until the point that they started pissing about moving singles back and forward. And then they started booking gigs 
in the same towns as us when we went on tour and had this big stupid projection of number one was going to project it on our gig. They were playing a pub across the road and we were playing in some fucking gym or something. So we phoned their management and said, look, we're going to pull this gig, right? Because if a lot, if one of your fans gets his head smashed in with a bottle by one of our fans, then, you know... And they'd started this, this ball rolling. So we pulled the gig and they said they were going to do the same. We're going to put out a joint statement. And, of course, we pulled the gig. They didn't pull their gig. They, they played that night and were sort of, you know, uh, basically gloating at the fact. So... That was it then. He was like, right, okay then, right. So we'll see when he's in the fucking hospital first with a nervous breakdown, you fucking punks. And that's been it since from then on. I've lost all respect for them and the enemy from that day, really. They sort of took the piss, really. But. And now everybody expects you to say, ah, but it's all in the past and leave it alone. It's like, oh no, I've, no, I haven't finished with him yet. As soon as the first record came out, it was pretty much accepted. We, I think we, we were pretty accepted after. <laughs> after about the first minute of Supersonic, people just went, well, fine, you know. As soon as you get to the chorus, that's it. Everybody else, sit down, go to the chippy, you know. We're in charge. It was a fucking great time. It really, really was a privilege, you know. And everybody loved us. You know, they all loved us. They still do. Quite amazing. We used to go around intimidating people in Camden, you know, at the Good Mixer, because that's where all the enemy hung, hung about and all that. We went there, like, the first night we ever got there, we got barred. We asked by the landlord to leave and not come back again, because I think Liam was, um, I think Liam was being particularly surreal towards Graham Coxon. He wasn't taking it too kindly because he was a regular. But we were asked to leave, which is quite funny. But um, we, had, we had some fucking brilliant nights out. And then, then Liam moved to London and spoiled it all. Why is that? Well, we're barred from everywhere now. Can't go in anywhere. Every time we take him out, he's spitting at someone or fucking, you know, punching photographers or getting in the back of other people's black cabs and stuff like that when they're at traffic lights and stuff. But, um, yeah, it's a good few years. In a word, it's shite, isn't it? I think. Um, I think that the people that the people that promised so much, whether it be the politicians or the people at the top of their game, delivered so little in the end. And I think everybody sold out for the money. You know, it's now acceptable to have your songs in adverts. It's now acceptable for Blur to sell software and Volkswagens, and it's acceptable for people to sell you car insurance through their music, I find that, I find that disgraceful. Um, yeah, everybody's, everybody's masquerading at the moment. They would have you believe that everybody's doing something of real quality and depth, but really, it's all fucking rubbish. Even Radiohead, man, you know. This is the band that went on top of the pops and changed the lyrics of you're so fucking special to you're so very special because it made them more money, eventually, in the end. It's all, it's all a smokescreen. Nobody's real, everybody's fake. Everybody's fake. The people who are not fake are the people who, it's like me and Liam, I suppose, and people like us, we just get slagged off all the time for just telling it like it is. You know, regardless of whether you agree with it or not, we always, I've never lied in an interview to anybody. You know, if people ask me a question, I'll just give them an answer. If you don't like it, fucking don't ask me any questions, you know. But um, everybody's fake, Not, you know, nothing is real. <laughs>